great day, ladies and gentlemen. Um, of course, you can see by now I'm not in school today, so today you will work independently uh, through your module. To give you a quick rundown of what you're going to do today, first thing you want to do is that we do have some issues with graphing linear equations and inequalities. And so we are going to go through a review of the formative assessment, the quick check that you completed uh, this week. So at this point, it is no longer being accepted. Okay. So the missings, the ones that have not been turned in yet, I'm giving you an extra day, they will turn into zeros, but you will have an opportunity to complete uh, remediation over it. With the remediation, everybody who scored below a 16 out of 20, so anything from zero to 15 will be given the opportunity um, when we go over the um, formative to do a remediation assignment. And you can recoup up to 16 points. You can get up to 16 points on that particular assignment. Uh, and I'll speak more about it as we go uh, as we go along, okay? So with that being said, uh, work diligently, work through everything. Um, after we do the review the formative, uh, we're gonna discuss the video that you watched on a Wednesday, the air puzzle. Make sure the air puzzle is complete, that you've gone over the notes, taking the notes. We're going to go from those examples, and if we have time in the period, you are going to start the problem pass, okay? You're going to start the problem pass, which is in your module for today. So if we have time, if you don't get to that and don't finish it, that's fine. Remember, our mastery goal is 80%. So a couple of you did, you were right there, but you didn't quite, you passed it, but you didn't quite get 16. I just want to make sure you have the opportunity to get 16. Uh, and we, we clear up any misconceptions that there might be, okay? So the first thing, when we talk about graphing, please make note of this. We are using the slope-intercept form. We are using the slope-intercept form. So, um, you definitely want to make sure why it's isolated and um, you can identify your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is always this B. So when I was grading, the first thing I'm looking for is, is B plotted correctly, all right? And so remember, when we talk about y-intercept, this is where the graph crosses on the y-axis. And so when I tell you, it, it, took me three seconds to look at some problem and tell if it was wrong, simply because I looked at where the um, graph went on the y-axis. So the first thing I want to plot is this five. I want to plot it on the y-axis. It's a positive five. So that's my first point. All right, for a lot of papers, I didn't see points. And so if this line didn't go through this five right here, it was automatically wrong. And so now we have the slope, okay? Uh, 
just a couple of you, not a lot of you, but just a couple of you, you got confused on the direction of the slope. All right, direction of the slope. So we, um, if it's positive, as, the, as it is in this particular problem, we have two options to go. And let me actually do positive in green because I'm gonna write negative right beside it, right under it. So if it's positive, if it's a positive slope, we go up, whatever our top number is, and to the right, or we go down and to the left. Those are really the same movements. That the, the, the two different directions is simply tell, uh, matter if we don't have extra room on our graph, we need extra points, okay? If it's a negative slope, if, a, if it's a negative slope, Watch the difference in directions. We can go up and to the left or down, then right. So notice the differences, positive up and to the right for a negative is up and to the left. For positive is down and to the left for a negative is down and to the right. So this one is negative, I mean positive. So we're going to use the green. We can either go up and to the right or down and to the left. And because I can't go up nine, okay, I'm going to go down nine to the left, five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. That's the right. Thank you. <laughs> And I noted it just as you were saying. I appreciate it. All right. So that's my line. No problem. Wait, Mr. Jackson. I'm listening. Um, so do you want us to unsubmit it and do the corrections on it? Or do you want us to just watch you and write down the notes? Ah, you can unsubmit it and do the corrections. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, so that's what your number one should have looked like. And it, when I'm looking at the graph, I'm looking for at least two points. I'm looking for the points. A lot I just got lines, lines all over the place. Just when we put a line on the graph does not mean it's correct, okay? So there's certain things we're looking for. And there goes the answer for number two as well. I'm only doing a couple just to, uh, so you can see what's going on. Do I have 20 messages? How did I get nine? Uh, right here. That's my top number. So that's why I went down nine into the uh, left five. Yeah, give me one second. Hey, well, y'all, did somebody send me a message in here? Did y'all need me? No, sir. No. Okay. Well, if y'all do just um, just send from. I had twenty minutes. I was trying to figure out where they came from. Y'all know what y'all working on? The room, the problem pass, finish the air puzzle. Then if you can, try your hand at the problem pass. In a minute, I'm going to call y'all back and we're going to go over the notes that we took from the episodes together, all right? All right. All right. 
So let's look at number three. Number three got a lot of people simply because it was not in um, it was not in slope intercept form. And so we kind of had to change it to slope intercept form. Um, and so when we do that, we had 2x minus y equals negative 5. So I'm going to bring my negative 2x over. I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So I was left with negative y equals negative 2x minus 5. Here's the problem, because a lot of people graph this line. There is a negative in front of that y. So I got to get rid of it. So in order to get rid of it, I divide by a negative one. All right, so that I make that a positive y. I'm gonna divide everything by negative one. So negative two divided by negative one gives me a positive two x and negative five divided by negative one gives me a positive five. So now this is what I want to graph. I want to graph this and I'm looking for, again, this is my B. So this is going to be my first point on the Y axis and it's positive five. So I should have had a, uh, my point should have gone through positive five. My slope is two, and so that's two. So it's positive, so I can go either up and to the right or down and to the left. And if I go up two, I run off the graph. So I'm gonna go down and to the left. So one, two, one, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one. I want to connect these. And that's what my graph should look like for number three. And so that's number three, and that's the answer to number four. I'll give you a minute to uh, copy those down. If you have any questions, I'll ask them, I'll answer them. Those are some particular things I'm looking to see, but the line has to go through the correct y-intercept or it's automatically um, incorrect. And understand when you divide by negative, if you already have a negative, well, dividing by negative is gonna change your sign, okay? So if what you're dividing by is positive, it's gonna to change to a negative. What you're dividing by is negative, it's gonna to change to a positive. All right. So this is gonna be five. So five, we jump into inequalities. And so a couple of things I was looking for for inequalities. I was looking for, again, did the line go through the y-intercept? If it did not go through the y-intercept, automatically marked it wrong, okay? Now, if it went through the y-intercept, then I was looking for what type of line was it? Because remember, in inequalities, you have two types of lines. You have a dashed line and you have a solid line. So I was looking at the particular type of line. If you put the wrong line, I took off half a point. took off half a point. And then I was looking at the shade. If you shade it on the wrong side, but had the right line, it took off half a point. So those three things there, on some of you, you forgot to shade at all. Anytime you're graphing a linear inequality in two variables, you're shading because remember everything in that shaded area is a solution as well. 
not just what's on the line, like an equation. Anything in the shaded area is a solution. So I'm going to work number five out for you. You can already see the answer to number six. Again, I'm just working some out just to make sure you get the drill. So five is already in slope intercept form. That's the first thing I got to check every single time. Is it in slope intercept form? And see it is. So this is my B. That's my Y intercept. And so my um, my uh, line has to go who that y intercept. And so it's going to be right here at three. Okay. All right. So, sorry, my Siri came up. All right. And so um, my slope is negative four over five. And so since it's negative, I can go up and to the left or down and to the right. I don't have enough room to go up and to the left. So I'm going to go down and to the right. I'm going to go down four, the top number. One, two, three, four. To the right, the bottom number. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And that's as soon as I can go. Now, this sign is a dashed line. So it's just a less than sign, so it's dash. So that's how I get my signs. All right, so now, anytime you have inequality, you got to shade. And this is what I want you to understand. You only have two options to shade. All right, and I'm just going to label them option A, option B. You can only shade one side of that line. And so what you're going to do is pick a point, and I'm going to pick the test point 0, 0. And I told you why I like 0, 0, just easy to work with. So we're going to do the test point 0, 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug it back into this equation. So we're going to have, instead of that y, we're going to put our test point y, which is 0. Negative 4 over 5, instead of that x, we're going to put our test point x, which is 0, plus 3. Now we want to simplify all of this. Negative 4 over 5 times 0 is 0 plus 3. So we got zero is less than three. Now we wanna ask ourselves, is that true? Is that correct? Is zero less than three? And it is, okay? So this is true. So this is essentially what this means. Since my test point was on side B and it was true, everything on side B is true. So I shade, everything on side B. If the test point I picked was on side B and it turned out to be false, then I shade everything on side A. Just filling that in. And so that's how the shading works, okay? So wherever you pick that test point, if it's true, shade everything on that side. If it's false, Shade everything on the opposite side. There goes the answer to six. I'll give you a couple seconds to write it down. And then we're actually going to um, come down and do number seven. All right, anybody need more time? All 
All right, so look at number seven. This one's not in slope intercept form. All right, so I want to manipulate it. I want to change it so it is in slope intercept form. And um, just being real with you, we should be very good at this. We've been doing slope, changing the slope intercept form now for about four or five weeks, okay? So this should become uh, second nature to us. It's going to be five. We're going to divide everything by five. So we have y is less than or equal to negative one over five x minus three. All right, so here we go. That's my y-intercept. You want to put it here. So it tells me I can go down one is negative, so I can go down and to the right. So down one to the right five. And if I go down one to the right five again, I don't have room. So what I'm gonna do is go the opposite direction up to the left. So up one to the left five. All right. Now I need to pay attention to my line. My line. My sign is less than or equal to that or equal to suggests that this is going to be a solid line. I know that was a horrible line, but it's a solid line. Okay. Now I want to do my test point. And since zero, zero is open, I'm going to do that. So test point zero, zero. So I'm going to plug it back into the original equation. So instead of x, I'm going to use my test point x, which is 0 plus 5 times. Instead of y, I'm going to use my test point y, which is 0. So less than or equal to negative 15. 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to negative 15. 0 is less than or equal to negative 15. So notice, that's the point I chose. And this is false. Give me one second. Somebody is at my door. One second. All right, so that was false. And so since the point that I tested is on this side, it's false. That means everything on the opposite side is the solution. Right. Now I do want to point out about number eight because it was unique. The line for number eight went through the origin. So I had to use a different test point. I used one one, which was right in here. And it turned out to be true. So that entire, the entire side was true. Do I have any questions? All right. So let's talk about the word problems. A lot of folks uh, did not even try the word problems. Okay. So I just want to discuss them briefly. And here we are. Um, first, we had to set up the equation. And so I had two variables. I had tickets, which were X, and snacks, which were Y. 
Well, I let ticket, tickets be X and snacks represent Y. Okay. And so my tickets cost $15. So 15X is where I got this from. My snacks cost $6. I got 6Y. That's where I got this from. And I wanted to make a total of $900. Right. So that was an equation. I wanted to make $900. And it tells us in the problem to write the equation. So our equation is 15X plus 6Y equals 900. So that was the original equation. We um, did it change it to slope intercept form. And you could have either wound up with y equals negative 15 over 6x plus 150. Or if you reduce that, you could have um, you would have gotten negative 5 over 2x plus 150. But I will tell you that when you get to this slope intercept form, no matter which one you use, you're going to get the same graph. Okay. The same exact graph. And so I graphed the line, which is over here in the green. Notice I only gave you the positive quadrant because uh, we won't have negative tickets nor negative snacks. So we only deal with one quadrant. I think one particular person actually drew the graph in there. You don't have to do that. Okay. So that's the graph. And the question was if the team sells 50 tickets, how many snacks does it need to sell? to reach the goal. Well, since our tickets represented the X, what I wanna do is come on the X axis and find 50 tickets, which is right here. And I wanna go up the line of 50 until it meets the graph, which it meets right there. I wanna know the coordinate, the ordered pair there. I know the X is 50 and the Y, if I come across is 25. Well, that 25 represents the snacks. That Y represents the snacks, which is 25. So the answer is 25. Should have been your answer. Now, some of you didn't do it by the graph because you didn't do the graph, but you gave me the answer. I gave you credit for it, okay? So you just did the math in here and I gave you credit for it. All right, and for the last one, it was an inequality. The problem defined your X and your Y for you. And so it says Trey is buying peach and blueberry yogurt cups. The peach yogurt cups cost $2 and the blueberry yogurt cups cost $3. He has $21 to spend. So that is sign of an inequality because I can't go over that 21. Can't go over that 21. But I can't spend less than the 20. I don't have to spend exactly $21, okay? And so my equation, my inequality is 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 21. I want to put that in slope-intercept form, which I did right here. And this, I graphed this, okay? Again, only gave you the positive quadrant, quadrant one. And so because it's in inequality, you have to shade. So I did a test point zero, zero, which is actually right in this corner. I worked it out, it came out to be true. So that means everything on this side of the line is true. So that's what I shaded. Now the question uh, that I pose, right, I would, the question that I pose is, is it possible to buy six peach cups and three blueberry cups? And that was kind of see if you understood um, the line in the inequality. Remember, if it's a dashed line, the values on the line are not a solution. But if it's a solid line, the values on the line are a solution. And so if you notice when I did six peach cups right here, three blueberry cups right here, it's directly on the line. So I would have had to know that because it's a solid line, because I use less than or equal to, because it's a solid line, that it is included. As a matter of fact, everything on this line is going to give you exactly $21. So you won't go to jail if you um, try to steal ice cream. I mean, yogurt cups. You will have enough money. This graphing remediation, I think. 
Now, it says it's worth 20 points. Uh, I'm grading out 20 points. Uh, the highest you can get is a 16. And the goal is to get four out of five. So get four out of five, you get a 16. Anything below that, I'll take the highest of the two grades, OK? Anything below that, I'll take the highest of the two grades. It's only five problems. You're going to work on that later because we're getting ready to look at our notes from the Ed Puzzle video. So do I have any questions? And that is going to be due. This graph from the mediation. Let me go ahead and put the due date on it. It's going to be due Friday night. I'm not taking after Friday night. So it is due Friday. I need you to get it in. On time, please. Have any questions? All right, cool. So I'm gonna bring the other group back. And we're gonna get started on the notes. Okay. I'm going to get started on the notes um, from the Ed Puzzle. All right, so um, everybody should be back. I want you, everybody to go ahead and pull up your notes from Solving systems of linear equations from the air puzzle video. And we're going to go over what you should have gained from them, what you should have gotten from them. And then we're going to move on to do a couple of examples. We'll do about three examples. All right, and so um, remember, you need to watch that video to get the points. And you're going to need to do the uh, examples that come from the video on the notes. So a uh, system of linear equations is just two or more uh, linear you're equations. Right, even though it's in notes? Uh, the, the video is, watching the video, yes. But the paper, the thing that we're doing now is in third grade. No. All right, so um, the key is they have to be linear equations. That means they have the highest degree has to be one. They have to have the same variables. And so you can't have one equation that has A and B and another that has X and Y. Both have to have A and B or both have to have X and Y in order for it to be considered a system. And the solution of a system is an ordered pair that makes both equations true at the same time. So the solution to a system is an ordered pair that makes both equations true at the same time. So those were the definitions you should have gotten. And so there are three possible solutions to a system of linear equations, okay? The first is if they intersect, if the lines intersect, the system has one solution at the point of intersection. So whatever ordered pair they intersect at, that's the solution. And we call that a consistent uh, system, a consistent system. 
I'm going to put this word up here just in case. So to intersect simply means to cross. So if they cross, the system has one solution at the point of where they cross. Our second solution says if the lines are parallel, and hopefully remember that what parallel lines are, lines that never intersect, that never cross, the system has no solutions. And that makes sense because if they never cross, there's never going to be an ordered pair that will satisfy both of them at the same time. And it is what we call an inconsistent system. It is what we call an inconsistent system. And C, if the lines are exactly the same, means if we can tell from the equations that they are the same, or we can tell from the graph that it's the same line, okay, that system has infinite or never ending solutions. And it is what we call a dependent system. It's what we call a dependent system. Okay. Can I move on? Does everybody have this? Yes, sir. All right, cool. So the next examples you should have gotten from the video. So if you have not gotten these from the video, I'm going to let you go back and get those from the video, okay? Now, I have five problems here on your own, but I've discovered for number one and two, something happened. I either typed something wrong or I got them mixed up. And so we're going to skip example that you do one and two. We're going to do three, four, and five, okay? All right, so we're going to do you do three, four, and five, which will give us the same thing as one and two gave us, except well, we're just going to have to put these in slow intercept form. All right. So if we're ready, we're going to go ahead and start. I'm going to make my screen just a tad bit bigger. So the first thing I got to do is all I'm doing is graphing both lines. That's all I'm doing, graphing both lines on the same coordinate plane. So I have to go through all of my steps for graphing lines. And so I'm going to do the first one in green. It's not in slope intercept form. All right. So I, first I got to change it to slope intercept form. So I'm going to do it on this side. So 5x plus 2y equals negative 16. Want to subtract 5x from both sides. And again, we've done this so much that you should be pros at it. All right. So we have 2y equals negative 5x minus 16. Divide both sides by 2. We get y equals uh, negative 5 over 2x minus 8. So that was our first line, and we're going to go ahead and graph it, okay? So our point will be at negative 8, which will be right here. And the slope is negative, so we're going down 5, up 2. I mean, down 5, up 2. Down 5 to the right 2, or we can go up 5 and to the left 2, okay? So let's, let's do down first. So I'm going to go down five, one, two, three, four, five, to the right two. One, two. And we do that again. Kind of run out of space there. So now we're going to go back up. Okay. We're going to go up and to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. All right, and that fills out our line. So we want to connect these. It's all solid because these are equations. We want to connect those, all right? So now we're going to do the second line, 3x 
plus 4y equals negative 4. We are going to uh, put this in slope intercept form. So that's our line, y equals negative three over four x minus one. So we're going to plot negative one here. And our slope is negative three, four. All right. So we're going to go down three to the left, four. One, two, three. To the right, four. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four. And so I'm going to stop right there because I can tell that that line is getting away from the green line. All right, so I know I'm not going to have a solution this way. So I'm going to go the opposite way to see if I get a solution. And I'm going to go up three, one, two, three, over four, one, two, three, four, up three, one, two, three, over four, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to stop right there because if you notice, I've already had a point to where they intersect. So they've crossed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect the red line, all right? And they cross, it looks like this is negative four and two. So it looks to me as if they cross at negative four and two. Now, before I say yes, I wanna check these. This is how I check them. I put them back into the equation, okay? Put them back into the equations. So this is my x value. This is my y value. So I'm going to check this equation first. So we have 5 parentheses negative 4, which is your x, plus 2 parentheses 2 equals negative 16. I want to see will that work out. So 5 times negative 4 is negative 20 plus 4. Negative 20 plus 4 equals negative 16. So that's good. Got to check it for the other side. So I'm going to have 3 times negative 4 plus 4 times 2. And I want to see if, that, if that's going to give me negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus 8. Negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4. All right. That checks out. So our solution to this system is negative four and two. And this is a consistent system because it has only one solution. So it's consistent. Hope you understand again why it's necessary to know how to graph these lines as well. All right, let's look at the next set. Everybody got that one? So it's consistent, has one solution, and that solution is at negative four and two.
All right. So you do number four. Again, we got to change the slope intercept form. And so we're going to um, do this on either side. I'm going to do the first one on this side. So we have 2x minus y equals negative 1. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. So we have negative y equals negative 2x minus 1. Again, I have this negative in front of here. So I have to divide by negative 1. So y equals 2x plus 1. Notice both became positive, OK? And let's go ahead and change this one. So 2x minus y equals negative 7. So we're going to subtract 2x. From both sides, we have negative y equals negative 2x minus 7. Again, we have negative y. So we're going to divide everything by negative 1. y equals positive 2x plus 7. So those are two uh, equations. So let's go ahead and graph. Let's graph red first. It's y-intercept is 1, so that's right here. And the slope is 2 over 1, so we're going up 2 to the right 1. So up 2 to the right 1. Then down 2 to the left 1. Again, it works so much easier when you have a ruler, a straight edge, because you won't need as many points, but I'm getting all the points so my line can be as accurate as possible. All right. So here goes the red line. Then we're going to do the blue line. So it'll be at 7 right here. Then our slope is 2 over 1 again. So we're going up 2 over 1. So up 2 over 1. Going on down 2 over 1. Here goes the blue line. Right. Notice that these lines are parallel. So there is no solution. Lines are parallel, so there is no solution. Now, if you watch the video, and if you remember some things, how could you have stopped when you found, does anybody know why, if you, how could you have stopped if you only found the uh, equation in slope intercept form? Could you have stopped there? Because the, um, oh no, I forgot what the, because the slope is the same. But there you go. Intercept isn't. Is that Kalasia? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Kalasia gave it to you. Just in case, if you put it in slope intercept for me, your slopes are exactly the same. Those lines will always be parallel. Your intercepts can be different, but if your slope is exactly the same, those lines will be parallel unless it has the same y-intercept then it's the same line. And in that case, it's infinite solutions. So here is example five. So the first thing I want to do is place this in 
slow intercept. Let me go in a little bit. So the first I'm gonna do in red over here, three X plus Y equals negative 10. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to slope intercept form. And so we're going to go ahead and graph it. So my y-intercept is negative 10. So that's going to be here. And my slope is negative 3. Again, that's over 1. So I have options. I can go up 3 and to the left 1 or down 3 and to the right. And we're actually going to go both ways. So I'm going to start going up and left. So I'm going to go up 3 to the left 1. Three, the left one, and then I'm gonna just do it the other way so I can make a full line. Of course, um, it's easy if you have uh, a ruler. But all right, now we're going to go ahead and connect those. Let's see how straight I can make my line here. There we go. All right, and in blue, we're going to do the second one. I'm going to do it over here. It has to be changed to slope intercept form. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. We have 9y equals negative 2x plus 135. We're going to divide everything by 9. So we get y equals negative 2x over 9, and that's going to give us uh, 15, a positive 15. So we're going to plot the y-intercept at 15. And so that's negative 2 over 9. So we're going down 2 to the uh, right 9. So down 2, one, 2 to the right 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9. And I can do that one more time. Down 2 to the right 9. 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. All right. Yeah, I can't go over 9 anymore, so I'm good that way. But now I want to go up to, just to make my line full, I'm going to go up to 1, 2, over 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I probably can already see where they're going to intersect, so I'm going to go up to again, up to and over 9. It's going to be right here. All right. So there's my blue line. And I'm going to draw it across here and so they intersect at this point here and that point is up here let me make it a little cleaner so we can see it all right so i erased it just want to make it a little bit cleaner so this slope let's go back to my slope is three and one one, two, three, over one. So right here. And in the blue, this slope, you know, it did it so it was going to come up through here. Through here. It's hard to make a straight line on this. So here goes my point here. So that x value is 9 negative nine, and that y value is seven. So that's my point, negative nine and 17, okay? Before I say here, now I wanna check it, so I'm gonna plug negative nine and 17 into both of these equations into the original form. So I'm gonna do three times x, which is negative nine now, plus 17, and I'm going to see if I get negative 10, so that's negative 27 plus 17, 
equals negative 10, and that is negative 10. So that's good. Now I want to check this one. I'm going to pull it back into this original equation. So 2 times negative 9 plus 9 times uh, 17. And I want to see if I get 135. Okay. So that's negative 18 plus, I didn't mean to erase, plus and 9 times 17. Um, that's going to give us 3, 5, yeah, 153. And if I use my calculator, that's 135, that's 135. That checks out. So my solution is negative 9 and 17. And this is a consistent solution. It only has one has one solution, all right? And so now, um, if you need to do the remediation, go ahead and do the remediation assignment. If not, you can do the problem pass. It's problem pass. It's about 12 problems in your uh, module. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you back on Monday.